Hello, my name is John Chapman. Now in this video podcast, we're going to look at quality management and specifically, we're going to provide an introduction to user acceptance testing on how we prove that our configured system works in accordance with our business requirements. First, let's look at the theory of testing. In Roger Pressman's book, Software Engineering, a Practitioner's Approach, there are a number of sections on testing. We'll identify two points here. The first one is that the goal of testing is to find errors, not to prove that it works, but to find areas that it doesn't work. The second one is that a good test has a high probability of finding an error. So we want to look at our system and see if we can find areas where actually it needs reconfiguration and rework. For out of the box configured software implementations, we'll have a look at the test strategy. The first one is to make sure that the design we did early on in the implementation has been configured correctly in the system. The second one is to make sure that that business need is actually met by the design. It might be that we thought one thing and when we came to implement it, we realized that the design needs amending. And the third one is to identify that the business processes match the organization policies and procedures. There are two other areas in our strategy. The first is we want to give our users an opportunity to go through the system and provide constructive feedback. Ultimately, they're the ones who are going to live with it day to day. And at the end of testing, to fix any gaps in the configuration that we have identified so that we're ready for go live. Now in Touchstone, we use an international standard published by the IEEE to look at the way we're approaching test planning. There's two items we look at here. On the test plan, we say, what is it that we're going to do to describe the scope, approach, resources, and schedule of intended activities? And this identifies the test items. What are the features to be tested? Who's doing the tests? What are the risks and the tasks that are involved? The theory is great. What does this mean to us? Well, the first thing is that the project assurance role, perhaps members of the end user community, need to prepare a number of test scripts that provide representative sample processes to be tested from the system. And we invite a sample of the end users to join the test session so they can get involved in testing and provide their feedback. At the start of user acceptance testing, we are likely to train that subset of users who are going to run the tests so they know how the system works. And then these users will run those test scripts for the representative sample business processes and record the results of the testing so these can be reviewed. Both during user testing and on completion, what we will evaluate are the results of the tests. How many have passed? How many have failed? And what's the rework to be completed? And once user testing has finished, we will work with you to update the system and run a set of sample retests to prove that the configuration is ready for go live. My name's John Chapman. I hope you have found this of educational interest this introduction to user acceptance testing. If you'd like to talk further with us, please give us a call. Goodbye.